Hello guys, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all keeping okay. Um, today's video is not about Spurs for a change. Um, something a little bit different. I actually want to talk about Chelsea. Um, it's a fascinating situation what's going on at Chelsea at the moment. Obviously this season has been one of massive upheaval for them. Um, obviously, you know, Thomas Tuchel said goodbye. They got rid of Thomas Tuchel after, you know... Um, you would have to say a lot of success. You know, he delivered them the European Cup and stuff like that. Obviously, Todd Bowley and Clear Lake Capital come in. Um, these American billionaire investors took over from Roman Abramovich, and they have gone to make their mark big time, not just in the Premier League, not just in European football, but world football. There has been so much change at that football club in the last, you could say last kind of six to 12 months, really, um, that I wanted to have a little chat about it and give my opinion. So be interested to see what you think about it as well. Now, obviously, where do we start? Well, we'll start with the amount of investment that that club has seen, like I say, since Todd Bowley has come in, um, the summer transfer window and this transfer window. I want to read out to you and show you the signings which they have made since Todd Bowley has taken over. Um, I'll put them up on the screen now. As you can see, Wesley Fofana, centre-half from Leicester, £75 million. Raheem Sterling, £50 million. Mark Cucurella, £55 million. Benoit Badia-Shile from Monaco, they've just confirmed for £35 million. Kaladu Koulibaly, £34 million. Carney Chukwameka, um, a young English central midfielder, £20 million. Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, £12 million. And, you know, obviously there's a few others there as well which haven't, you know, I think they're more youth players and players for the future. Um, Cassade, um, Slanina, Dennis Sicaria on loan, who was actually very good against Man City the other day as well. But yeah, like you, you know, as you can see, enormous money, and that's on top of appointing a brand new manager in Graham Potter as well. It's just been um, absolutely crazy, to be honest, the amount of change that's gone on there. Um, but they leave themselves in a weird situation. They've won one game in eight this season. Um, and Graham Potter finds himself, I don't know if you could say if he finds himself under pressure, but it's it's strange because, you know, last night against Man City, obviously they lost against Manchester City yesterday at Stamford Bridge. They're 10th in the Premier League after I think it's 18 or 19 games. It's not good at all. And for that investment, these guys are going to want a return on their investment sooner rather than later. I don't think they're going to finish in the top four. I mean, that top four race is so, so, you know, diluted already with Spurs, um, Man United, Liverpool, OK, they've dropped off a little bit. But, you know, you even have a look at teams like Brighton and stuff like that as well. They could quite easily make a go for it this season as well. There's so many teams, Newcastle as well, obviously. Uh, there's so many teams. I think Chelsea have been left behind a little bit. But there doesn't seem to be a lot of talk about how much they're struggling. And um, yeah, this is what the video is for. So you know, these players, why have they gone for this? It almost seems to be like they've gone for a scattergun approach with who they've gone for. Because on top of, you know, the Fafana 75 Sterling, blah, blah, blah. They're also supposedly in talks with Shachar Donetsk to sign Mikhailo Madrik, the left-footed dynamite winger who obviously plays for them Ukrainian guy Arsenal won him as well but there have been a lot of examples where other Premier League teams want to go in for a player and Todd Bowley gazumps these other Premier League teams it's very very strange well it's not strange it's just interesting as to what their transfer strategy is because if you have a look at Graham Potter um, you know obviously Potter has come from probably the best run team in England apart from Brentford in Brighton where, you know, they were very much stats-driven. They would sign players to fit a system. And then, obviously, the coaching work that Potter and, you know, his assistants would bring in there would work. And they'd, you know, they've they've created some brilliant players like Alexis McAllister, you know, Pascal Gross, players like that at, at Brighton who aren't the biggest names but fit the system and play very, very well. Chelsea just seem to be signing anyone. I mean, Mark Cucurella has not been a very good signing. Um, Raheem Sterling's hardly set the world on fire there at Chelsea, despite you know what a big profile he is. Uh, Kula Bali hasn't looked terribly solid. I've got to be honest. fafana has been injured. It's just been a bit all over the place, and um, yeah, it's um, 
I don't really know what Todd Bowley's doing. I was listening to something that one of the journalists at The Athletic put out the other day, and they seem to think that Chelsea are spending all of their investment money they put aside for players now before Man United sell up and Liverpool sell up and they get new owners. Because I do just wonder the calibre of owners that them two are going to get in and how much money they're going to spend probably in the summer. You know, if two more Arab states or another American conglomerate of billionaires walk into Liverpool and Man United, all the best players will be taken. And, you know, you've seen again, like I say about Madrid, they've also opened talks to try and sign Enzo Fernandez, the World Cup young boy of the season, young boy, young player of the tournament and stuff like that for over 100 million there seems to be no end to how much they're going to spend to get this right. And I just don't think that's the right way of doing it. Now, they've made steps in terms of recruitment, um, you know, in regards to the scouting and, um, you know, the developing of the recruitment there. They've bought in, I'll need to get this right, um, Christopher Vivell, who's a 36-year-old. He was in charge, uh, he's been appointed as the technical director, 36-year-old, who was in charge of the Red Bull Football Group's recruitment worldwide. And obviously, he's got an enormous... Um, I'd say back catalogue, it's not really, but he his scouting that he's put in place you know, over the Red Bull network has been extremely impressive. And that is, I would say that's positive steps Todd Bowley's put in there to get football people in the greatest of respect. You know, there has been talk that in the summer when he was clashing with Tuchel over transfer signings and he was doing it all himself... He didn't show himself in the best light, Todd Bowley, when he entered negotiations and stuff like that. And he needs football people in there who know how the transfer market works, who know, you know, kind of like what signings to look for, up and coming players, players to fit Graham Potter's, Potter's system. Because, you know, when they appointed Graham Potter at first, they said, you know, he's one of the most innovative coaches in the world. Yeah, he is, but you've also got players like Jorginho there who, as good as Jorginho is, he's a one he's a one position player in a system. And I think Graham Potter likes players who can move around the pitch, they can interchange positions and stuff like that. And I think that we will now slowly start to see a change in the profile of the players that Chelsea will be going for in the next few years, especially with Christopher Vivelve, this technical director coming in. I think you will start to see the recruitment change quite dramatically. So, um, yeah, that's that's my opinion on it. Um, it's just been a strange, strange time at Chelsea. Um, I think that obviously so much has changed. We hear the words transitional seasons a lot. I really do think Chelsea are in a transitional season. I think they'd be mad to get rid of Graham Potter because he's a really good manager, but they have to give him time for this system to work that Todd Bowley's put in. It's clear that Potter is Bowley and his clear late capital investment group's man. He's the one that they have chosen as their as the ownership group's you know statement manager to take this forward so they've got to give him time because they're going to look pretty stupid if they get rid of him halfway through the season already so um yeah we'll see what happens uh, we'll see what players they bring in we'll see how Chelsea develop over the season but I'd like to know your thoughts so let me know um it's FA Cup weekend isn't it it's going to be quite interesting to see what teams, um, you know, managers put out for the FA Cup because it has lost a little bit of that shine, especially with such a condensed Premier League fixture list coming up as well to catch up with a World Cup. So we'll see what happens. But um, yeah, make sure you still follow me. Subscribe to the channel if you like the content. Follow me on Twitter. And um, until next time, guys, thanks all for tuning in. I'll see you later. Have a good weekend. Thanks a lot. See ya.